right, we'll go ahead and get started. Good evening. It's good to see everyone tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, let's be in prayer for tonight's service. We have all of our, our classes going on, uh, our kids' class and our, our youth and college class. We're praying for them and our teachers. And Brother Eric's going to be bringing our message tonight and teaching for us. We'll pray for him, what the Lord has on his heart for tonight. Um, again, thank you so much for being here. We do have a quick announcement. Uh, after service, we'll have a quick uh, business meeting uh, voting our, on our uh, nominating committee. So just be... Uh, thinking about that, we'll be just having a quick little business meeting after after service, so stick around for that if you can. Uh, but again, thank you all so much for, for being here. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and we'll get started uh, this evening. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and Lord, we just ask you just to, uh, to be with us tonight. And uh, Lord, I pray that you will just help us set everything aside for the moment, Lord, and just uh, glorify you with everything that is said and everything that's done. Lord, I pray for all the teachers. Uh, Lord, I pray for them, Lord, that you will just uh, move through your word. I pray for Brother Eric, Lord, that you will just give him the words to say tonight. Uh, Lord, I pray for the ones that are here, the ones that are watching. Maybe there's some tonight that couldn't be here, Lord. Uh, for whatever reason, Lord, maybe it's sickness, uh, maybe things going on. Lord, I pray for them that you will just uh, use your word uh, through our uh, through Facebook, through everything that's, that's being shown. Lord, there will be lives that hear this message tonight, Lord, that we don't know of. Lord, I pray that you will just be with your word, Lord, and we know it doesn't return void, Lord, so we Lord, love you, Lord, and I pray you'll just plant seeds uh, throughout uh, the congregation, Lord, whoever's watching. So, Lord, we love you, and we thank you, and we pray. Amen. If we can tonight, let's stand. I'm going to start mentioning, too, if you uh, have a book in front of you, if you want to use that, too, you can. It's uh, page 575, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Let's see. We thank you, and Lord, thank you for allowing us just to be able to lean on you, Lord, each and every day. Lord, I pray for Brother Eric, give him the words to say tonight, Lord, and I pray your word will just touch each and every heart here tonight. In your name I pray, amen. You may be seated. Brother Eric.
Am I on? Yeah, I'm on. Yeah, I'm on. Yeah, I'm on. Uh, good to be here tonight. I, uh, Pastor Mike had uh, asked me, you know, maybe a week, like this time last week, maybe if, if, uh, if I could teach tonight. So uh, I appreciate him asking me. I appreciate the opportunity. And, and uh, before I get started, though, what, what, uh, what Trey had mentioned there earlier about uh, voting on the nominating committee tonight. You know, I've served on the nominating committee for, oh, I couldn't tell you how long, how long we've been doing it, but, uh, uh, you know, this time of year, it's always, you know, we always have some teachers that decide that they, you know, they're going to step down and maybe get back in a class and, and get fed themselves for a, for a change. And, and, uh, and I, you know, I totally understand that, but I want to ask you all to start praying that the Lord will use you. So if the Lord lays one of you all or all of you all on our hearts to come and ask you to teach a class for us or, or fill, a, fill a spot as a, as a church officer or something, you've already prayed about it, so you don't have to give me the answer. Well, let me pray about it. You've already prayed about it. You need to tell me yes or no then. What do you think? Because it takes all of us. And I just, and you know, uh, and that's, that's that's just that's the way I do it. I, I you know I always I try to just say you know Lord, if you got me if you got something for me, uh, you know, let me know about it and 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 you know wherever I can help wherever I can serve, um, you make the opportunity available for me and but just pray about it and and because uh, we may we may be coming to you and and uh, talking to you about some things anyway. Uh, what we're going to talk about tonight is our prayer life. And I'm going to, this is, this is not a sermon. This is, this is like a Sunday school lesson. And I'm going to describe to you my prayer life. And I want you to reflect upon your personal prayer life. And, 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 uh, and that's what I want you to do. I just want you to think about some of the things that I'm going to talk about and, and, and you know, apply that to your life. And because, and I mean, I, I have shortcomings, and I'm, <laughs> I'm fully aware of that. God makes me aware of that every day. And, uh, but but I, I, just want, I just want to share with you kind of a testimonial how, how, how I pray, and, and maybe that'll help you, and maybe that'll help uh, open up some avenues of prayer for you all and everything. But uh, I just... Uh, that's what the Lord laid on my heart when Mike asked me, uh, like I said last week, whenever it was, um, <laughs> I was, uh, I think, at, I was trying to think as Wednesday, probably Thursday night, maybe even when I went home Wednesday night. Uh, you know, we didn't have any rain there last week, and I was out there with my water hose out there in the garden, sitting there holding it on my bean row, just wetting everything down. I'm thinking, well, I planted the seed, and here I am watering it now. You know, I'm just thinking, you know, that's, you know, we plant seed and, and you know, and, and then somebody else waters it and then God gives the increase. And I'm just sitting there thinking about, well, is that what you want me to talk about, Lord? So I was kind of, you know, going in that direction. And, and uh, then uh, I don't know, I don't remember when it was, probably first of the week, Sunday. No, Sunday's when, when, when this came to me. Sunday morning, when we had our a cappella service because we didn't have any musicians, man, that was, that took me back. And that really blessed my heart. And I was sitting back here thinking, man, how thankful I am to be here at church. And even, even we don't have musicians to play or mute, we're still, we're still singing. We're still worshiping the Lord. And, uh, but it was just, I don't know, it's, I always enjoy those those little a cappella moments, you know, whenever it's just us hanging and praising the Lord. But, but I was thinking how good the Lord had been to me, how, 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 how blessed I am. I'm 56 years old, so I'm probably past the middle of my life. I doubt I'll live to see 112. So I'm probably on the downside of halfway, okay? So... Uh, and I'll, I, I, I always think about this, you know, when I'm praying, you know, Lord, you have blessed me 
every day of my life. And if you stop blessing me tomorrow, I can never say that I haven't been blessed because he's took care of me. He's took care of me. He's carried me through some rough times. He's picked me up when I couldn't get up myself. Uh, you know, he's, I was raised up uh, in West Maryville Baptist Church uh, till I was probably 22 or 23 years old. And, uh, and we left there and, and, uh, and, and, you know, shortly thereafter, you know, when, when, when Tanya and I started dating and stuff, you know, we were, we were going to different churches and things. And, and, uh, after we got married, we still were kind of looking and, uh, kind of got out of church for a little while and everything. But, uh, you know, I guess my point is that all that I was raised up in church. So, uh, you know, everything that I was taught as a child, even though maybe I strayed away from it, it was always in there. And, you know, it, it always draws you back. But, but, uh, so like I said, you know, I got to thinking about, about, uh, you know, Sunday morning when I was sitting back there, I was thinking, man, how good God has been to me. Everything that I've ever needed, he's provided. Most everything that I've wanted, he's given me. Um, you know, I can't, I can't think of anything that, that I don't have that, that I truly want or desire. I mean, you know, he's blessed, he's blessed me and me and Tanya with a good marriage. Uh, we've had, you know, we've had, uh, both had, you know, good jobs and able to, able to, you know, make a living and, and, you know, get the things we need and everything. He's, I mean, he's always took care of us. I, I was raised up in a, in a good, in a good, you know, godly family and, and, uh, he just always took care of me. But, but I was thinking on this lesson, I, I was thinking about, you know, my prayer and, and, uh, so before we get too deep into it, I'm going to stop and I'm going to pray over this lesson real quick, and then we'll go ahead and get started. But Lord, I just, I just, uh, I just thank you. I thank you for your goodness and your grace and your mercy, Lord. I thank you for your faithfulness, your long suffering, your promises, and your forgiveness. And I just uh, thank you for this beautiful day and for allowing us to be part of it, and, and for allowing us the opportunity to gather together once again here in your house, Lord, with my brothers and my sisters to just uh, lift you up, Lord, and, and to praise and honor you for a little while here this evening, Lord. And I just, uh, I just ask you to, to uh, take these words, Lord, and make them yours. Uh, I'm just blessed to be here, Lord, and, and, and just ask you just to, you know, make me an instrument and use me. In Jesus' name I pray. But I want you to think about in your mind whenever you're praying. Who do, who, do you, who do you imagine or what do you imagine God looks like? You know, I mean, you know, you see all these pictures, all these, you know, paintings of, of, over time, you know, that, that people have painted of, of God or of, of Jesus. And, and, but, you know, like the, the, the kind of the old-looking man with the big head of white hair and a big old white beard and a maybe a lightning bolt in his hand. You know, you, 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 you get these images and things, uh, and I've always, <laughs> ever since I was a kid, uh, in school, whenever we were reading, you know, assigned reading books or whatever, I think back on one in particular, To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, you know, when I start reading them, I can always picture where that's taking place at. You know, I, I take something probably out of my past, and, and, and that's where that story is taking place even though it's nothing like what the movie was because I didn't see the movie first so I don't know you know I read the book first but anyway I get I, in my mind I, I, I picture stuff like that but you know I'm like well, what does God look like you know who is he to you you know is, is, he, is he that old looking you know guy with the long white hair and a long white beard or or do you even think about that when you're praying but you know some some thoughts that I think of whenever I'm whenever I'm praying I you know I think about you know, this, the God that I'm praying to walked in the Garden of Eden with Adam and talked to him. And, and, you know, I think about his dealings when he was dealing with Abraham 
and and starting, you know, the 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 children of Israel. You know, I mean, that was the initial beginning with Abraham. He promised Abraham that he would, you know, multiply multiply him, and 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 Lot. You know, his dealings with Lot and and his dealings with Sodom and Gomorrah, and and you know, go on and on. And I think about you know how he dealt with 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 Isaac and then with Jacob. You know, and changed his name to Israel, and then you know all the you know, the 12 tribes of Israel and, and, and how he empowered Moses, you know, to lead them out of captivity when, when they were in Egypt and everything and all, the, all the, uh, the plagues that he brought upon the Egyptians, you know, to get to, to make all that happen. And then I think, you know, this God that I'm talking to did all that. He's, he's the same God that did all that all those many thousands of years ago and I'm talking to him on a personal level and and then I think you know all along he knew about me all along he had that perfect plan to cure sin he had back before time began that that place in time where he became flesh where he took on human flesh and came and dwelt among us and that same God Here's our prayers, every one of us, when we pray, that same God that did all that, that created the universe out of nothing. Here's our prayers. And wants to have a personal relationship with each one of us. You know, uh, the first chapter of the book of John, uh, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God the name the same was in the beginning with God all things were made by him and without him was not anything made and I want to jump down to verse 14 where it says and the word what we're talking about the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth so, you know, when I pray, I'm thinking about who God is and, and, who, and who he has been throughout history and who he is to me. And when I read the Bible, I don't know, you know, you, you, when you hear some people talk about God and, and about, or, uh, about Christianity, it, it, it's like sometimes they're, it's like a storybook. You know, they're talking about it like it's a story. Like I said, I was raised up in church. And I was taught from the, you know, I can, far back as I can remember, you know, who God was and, 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 and what Jesus did for us. And all and everybody, you know, every person that we read about in the Bible, like the ones I were just mentioning, plus all the others, I never once doubted that. I never have ever once doubted God's word, 100%. I believe it with all my heart. And, and you know, so when I read the Bible, it's not a storybook. I mean, it's an it's actual account of actual events, miraculous events. But uh, so, you know, when I think about that when I'm praying, and, and, and I guess in light of that, you know, you, you hear, I mean, I don't listen to country music, but, but I know I... Uh, well, I played golf with my nephew there yesterday, and he's, he was listening. He had some country music CD in there, and he was listening to something while he was going to the golf course, and it was, and I don't know who the guy was saying was talk, talking to the man upstairs. I'm just like, you know, God is not the man upstairs. God, I mean, he's the almighty, the most high God. You know, I don't, I don't want to irreverent, irreverence him by, and, you know, lowering him to, you know, a, you know on, to bring him down to my level. You know what I mean? Because, I mean, he's high and lifted up. I mean, that's what the, he's the most high God. And, and you know, so, and, and I, and I, and I kind of, that's the way I pray when I pray. You know, uh, just, you know, if you read the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Well, I, I, try, to, I try to hallow that name, and, and I, I try to give him praise and honor and glory 
by addressing him as such, you know, and, 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 and so, you know, thou who art everlasting to everlasting, because, you know, in Psalm, in the, in the 106th Psalm, it says, blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting, and let all the people say amen, praise ye the Lord. Uh, and thou who art high and lifted up, O Lord, from Isaiah 6, 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting up on the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And I think back to the creation account in Genesis. It tells us that he spoke the universe into existence. If you go back and read it, you go back, you know, and, and uh, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. It doesn't say he rolled up his sleeves and got a shovel and, 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 a, and a, you know, a wheelbarrow and mixed up some mud and started to create stuff. It said, and God said, let there be light. He didn't say nothing about it. He made that light. He said he spoke that light into existence. And, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Genesis 1, 6, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the, from the, the, waters, from the waters. Now, in Genesis 1, 7 says, And God made the firmament. But it said, And God said, Let there be a firmament. So, uh, you know, he created the universe and everything in it including this planet that we live on and every one of us and uh, all, through the, all through the creation account. But, but there's 48 verses in the Bible that refer to him as the Most High God. And uh, thou who art great and greatly to be praised, First. From First Chronicles sixteen twenty five, for great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. And and I know what you know. We used to sing that song. I sing praises to your name, O Lord. Praises to your name, O Lord. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. Y'all remember that? I mean, what a beautiful song. And and. and that's, you know, I think about those things. So, you know, I address him as such and, and, and you know, and reverence him and, and, and praise him. And then I always, the first thing I do in my prayer life is ask for forgiveness for my sin. Because I'm, you know, I don't think God hears our prayers if, if we're unclean. I think, you know, we have to, we have to bring it to the altar and, and lay it down and confess those sins. Because 1 John 1, 9 tells us. He's faithful and just to forgive us if we confess our sins to him. So the first thing, the very first thing I do, you know, I, 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 I confess my sins and ask for forgiveness. And then I thank him. The next thing I do, I thank him for all the blessings of my life and, you know, what we've been talking about here. And when you look back on your life, just like I was talking about a while ago, can you see his, can you see his hand guiding you? I mean, like I said, I didn't always live... And, and I, I, don't say, I always, I don't always now, but, but, you know, I didn't always live uh, for him. Let me put it that way. Uh, you know, I strayed. Uh, when I, when I, when I, my first salvation experience, I won't say when I got saved, my first salvation experience, I was about 13 years old at a revival one Friday night at West Maryville Baptist Church. And I, I know you all have heard this before, but, but, uh, you know, Went to revival all week, and, and uh, Friday, Friday night, the music director came over to me, and and he was also part of the one of the youth one of the youth directors, or you know he was. Anyway, he came over and put his arm around me. He said, "You ever think about getting saved?" I said, yeah. He said, "You want to get saved?" I said, "Yeah." I didn't know he meant right then, so you know he carts me off back to the pastor the pastor study, and the evangelist that was had been preaching, we sat down there and, his, and talked to him and we read some scripture and we prayed and we cried and, and uh, read some more scripture and, you know, prayed some more and cried some more. And when I left there, you know, I, I was saved. So Saturday night, the next night of revival, uh, they had, you know, they, pulled, they had me come down front and everybody come around hug my neck, you know, and proud of you, proud of you, you know, all that stuff. But, you know, after, and I got baptized probably about a week after that. I don't know when it was, but they didn't keep their baptistry full like we do. We just, you know, somebody got baptized, 
it was a pretty big, pretty big deal. You know, we had to fill the baptistry up and everything, so it took a while. But, uh, you know, after that happened, it wasn't nothing about me changed. I was still the same old guy. But, uh, and I lived probably the, I don't know, if I was 13 then, I probably lived, I I'm going to say 20 more years or so, thinking I saved and I'd have busted hell wide open if I'd have died. Because I wasn't, I wasn't, they wasn't no if, ands, or buts about it. Looking back, I mean, you know, nothing, like I said, nothing about me changed. But, but, uh, but like I said, when you look back on your life, even then, even then, you know, you stray a little bit and you know you're wrong, you're doing wrong. I mean, and, and, I've, and I've always, I always remember, you know, when, when Preacher Mike talks about, you know, God don't, he don't, he don't whip other people's kids. He don't whip the devil's kids. He only whips his kids. So, you know, I say I wasn't, but, you know, he always had that influence on me. He'd always scoop me back, you know, where I needed to be, you know, if I got, if I got too, too far away and everything. But, but uh, you know, I'm thankful for that and, I, and, and, and grateful for that. But, but, you know, I look back on that and I can see his hand, you know, where it guided me and directed me. And even though I wasn't living for him and, 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 and trying to, you know, uh, keep my life accountable, um, he was always there for me and, and you know, kept me from straying too far. Because I could have easily, the people I was running around with, I could have easily ended up, you could have seen my picture in one of them little magazines at the grocery store there where it's got all them, you know, Blunt County inmates and stuff in it. I could have been one of them people I was running around with. But by the grace of God, I'm not. So, but do you count your blessings every day? You know how that old song goes? Count your blessings one by one. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. Man, I can't tell you. I can't tell you the, the uh, Proverbs 10, 6. Blessings are upon the head of the just, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Uh, Proverbs 20, 28, 20 says, A faithful man shall abound with blessings, and I don't consider myself a faithful man by any means. I mean, I, I, I struggle. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. But, but he's blessed me. And I can't, you know, I'm eternally grateful to him for, for what he's given me. And, and like I said, if he quit, if he quit, if he quit bless me tomorrow, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't say he never blessed me. But, but I, so, so I, when, I, when I get into my thankful, you know, when I'm thanking him for all the blessings, I think about the, Lord, thank you for the breath of life because you let me wake up this morning and see another day. There's a lot of people that don't get to do that. As we say at the fire hall, he woke up dead this morning, you know, and that's a little, I mean, we always kind of, you know, we kind of that, uh, I don't know what you call it, that death humor, you know. But uh, the breath of life. Thank you, Lord, for letting me see it. And thank you for my health. You know what? I've had one surgery in my life. And I had my tonsils out when I was like six years old. It's the only time I've ever been in the hospital. Uh, I broke a leg one time and, you know, had to wear a cast. And, I mean, I've had colds and flus and stuff like that. But, but for the most part, I've had, I've had good health. And, and thank you, Lord, for the roof over our heads. How many of you got a roof over your head when you when you go home tonight? See, uh, you got a roof over your head. I've got, <laughs> and Tanya, she'll sit back there and laugh when I say this. I've, we've got clothes on her. I've got a closet full of clothes that I don't even wear. And she's all time after me. Don't you get rid of some of that stuff? And you know, if the stuff you ain't going, if you ain't going to wear it, take it down to our church and let them give it to people that will wear it. But. Uh, so, you know, thank you, Lord, for the clothes on our back. Thank you for the food on our table. I have never one day in my life went hungry unless I was trying, you know, dieting or whatever and trying to lose weight. I, I have never been without food. And uh, thank you, Lord, for the shoes on my feet because there's people that don't have shoes on their feet. Uh, he's blessed us with good jobs. Thank you, Lord, for heating and air conditioning. Thank you, O Lord, for a nice, comfortable bed to sleep in and a blanket to cover up with. Thank you for the clean water that's piped right into my house and I don't have to go out and get it. 
and I can drink it right out of the faucet and, and not have to worry about getting sick from it. Because I see all the time, you know, some of these third war countries and, and you know, man, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the cars we drive to get us from one place to another. Thank you, Lord, for the family that you have blessed me with, that I grew up with, and I ask you to watch over them and protect them and keep them safe and out of harm's way. And I ask you to pour out your blessings upon each and every one of them, wherever they may be in the world. And I pray that same prayer for my church family, that each one of you all, that he pours out his blessings upon all y'all and watches over you and protects you and keeps you safe and out of harm's way. And I, find, and I, and I pray for our pastors. I pray for our church leaders and, and for God's guidance and direction and, and his leadership uh, uh, for the future of our church. And, but most of all, I thank him for Jesus. I thank him for what it says in John 3, 16. Thank you, Lord, for loving me so much, for loving us so much that you gave your only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you, Lord, for becoming flesh and dwelling among us. And thank you for the blood that was shed at Calvary for the remission of sin. Hebrews 9.22 says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year, once a year, every year, with the blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed one to men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So that's, who, that's what I'm most thankful for, for his salvation, for the price that he paid to redeem me from this wicked filth of sin that I was born into and that, and I, you know, that I wade through all day long. And that's what I'm most thankful for. So then after, I, after, after, after the thankfulness, then I, you know, we've got a, we've got a prayer list here at church, you know, of, of all the people that, you know, in our church family that are sick. And I've got my own personal prayer list, too, of, of folks that, you know, my friends and my family that are, that are dealing with sickness and, and, and other things, too. So I lift up all of those on my personal prayer list. And then I lift up all those that we, you know, we have on our, on our prayer list here at churches. And, and, you know, and I know God doesn't need reminding. I know, he, you know, he's, he's omniscient and he, and he don't forget. But I ask him to heal all those on my list and on the church's list, just like he healed and cleansed during his earthly ministry. You know, you can go back in the gospel. You can go back in the gospel and you can read uh, about when he healed a centurion's servant. You know, the centurion came up to him and said, you know, I've got a, he's one of my guys that's sick at the house and everything. And Jesus said, let's go to him. He said, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to even come into my house. I'm paraphrasing, but... And Jesus said, well, I'll just heal him right now then. He said, if you're, the centurion said, if you'll just speak the words. And he did, and it says that the, his servant was healed the self, self same hour. You remember the woman with the issue of blood? I'm looking for, here, there's some. The woman with the issue of blood. You know, she, she got down on her hands and knees and crawled just to touch the hem of his garment 
so she could be healed. She believed that she could just get in proximity of him, that she could be healed. And you know what? She was. You know why? Because she believed. She had faith. And, and uh, you know, Jesus healed the man with the palsy. He healed a man that, uh, uh, you remember the, the man that was let down through the, through the roof? You remember Peter's mother-in-law? You remember the, the Canaanite woman's daughter? Somebody preached on out here just not too long ago about the crumbs that fell off the, the table of the, of the Jews and everything. Anyway, you know, he cleansed lepers. He gave sight to the blind. I mean... The Bible says in Matthew 4, 23, that Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments and those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the palsy you know what he did? He healed them. And like I said, I know God don't, I know he, they, he don't need reminding. But I just want him to know that I believe that. 100% that, that what, what the word says is true, that he, that he did that. And I believe and I have faith that if he did it for them, he can do it for us today still. And I just want him to know that I trust in him and I have faith in him to do that. I mean, there's 33 verses of him healing just in the Gospels. But uh, so when I, when, I get, when I get finished with that part of my prayer, then, I, then that's whenever I start on world affairs, you know, and praying for our country and to shape our countries in. And, and, uh, and, and you know, uh, I, always, I always remember, uh, you know, Second Chronicles 7, 14. And I know... You know, if my people who are called by my name, okay? And I know I'm not the only one out there that's called by his name that's praying. So, you know, I always think, you know, where one or two are gathered, there I will be also. And I, and I know he hears our prayers. And, and so we need, we need to keep praying. We need to keep lifting, lifting our country up and the world up to him. Uh, it's not just our country that's in turmoil. It's the whole world. But, uh, you know, and I think that's like, you know, like Pastor Mike says, that's a sign of the times and, you know, here in the last days. And, I mean, it's not going to, contrary to what a lot of people think, uh, it ain't going to get no better. But uh, uh, God hears the prayers of his people, and we can move the throne of God with our prayers. Uh, there's some things, a lot of things that are set in stone with the Lord but there are, you know, in, in his, in his, uh, in his, in his, uh, I'm, I'm losing my, my word now, but, but, uh, you know, there's some things that, that can be changed. And we need to, as Christians, we need to, we need to be lifting each other up. We need to be, as, as we heard from the pulpit Sunday, we need to be out there in the mission field, uh, praying for our brothers and sisters out there that uh, don't know the Lord. And because, uh, you know, just like here not too long ago, we were talking about, uh, you know, the, uh, the white throne judgment. After, after all of us who are Christians get raptured out of here and we spend, uh, you know, we spend our, our millennium, you know, the millennial reign and everything and, and all that happens and then, you know, then we, uh, we get to go up, we get to go to a big, like, you know, Neyland Stadium type setting and set up our stands and watch all of our unsaved friends march across that platform and let God judge them and throw them into the lake of fire for the last and final time. And we had the opportunity to say something to them and witness to them, it's their decision to make. But but if they don't know, if they don't know, if they've never heard the gospel, whose fault is that going to be? If you had an opportunity to talk to them, and you didn't. But I pray, I pray that the Lord would give me boldness, and would give me 
uh, no fear when that time comes to, to, to witness to people and not be, what's the worst thing they can do to you? What's the worst thing they can do to you if you, if you go up to them and try to tell them about Jesus? The worst, I mean, of course, the worst thing to do, I guess, is kill you, but, you know, I mean, like Paul said, you know, uh, if I die, that's gain for me because I know where I'm going. You know, I'm not, <laughs> I'll say I'm not in any hurry to get, you know, to, to be killed, but if that, if that happens, that's, uh, that's God's will. But, but you know, I, those are, what like I said, in my prayer life, and I just wanted to, you know, you all to think about your prayer life and everything, and and uh, you know, let's let's all let's all try to exercise that privilege and that opportunity to go to the Lord, and and I mean, you know, I mean, you don't have to make an appointment. He's available anytime you are, anytime you have time. He's got time, and he wants you to come and see him. He wants, he wants to spend time with you. He wants to have a relationship with each and every one of us. Uh, you know, when we're praying, that's how we communicate with him. Most of the time, he communicates th through his word. That's what that's for. That's, uh, that's how he communicates back with us. Now, there are times whenever he, you know, lays stuff on our hearts, and, and you know, but for the most part, just like it says in Hebrews, that's how he communicates with us, through his word. But uh, uh, communication is a two-way street. You know, if you don't talk to him, you're probably not going to hear from him very often. And, and if you're not hearing from him very often, there may be a reason for that. So I just, I just you know, I struggle with this too. This is, this is, this is my sermon to myself, okay, to, to be better in my more diligent in my prayer life and I'm not you know like I said I've got to I've got to eat this too I'm not trying to feed it to you before I partake but because I've been struggling with it ever since I he laid it on my heart but I just I just wanted to share that with you and 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 I hope I hope you take something away from that 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 maybe uh when you think about you know who you're praying to and 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 you know what, what the, what that can, what those prayers can do, that, that that'll strengthen your strengthen your prayer life. But but I thank you, I thank you for for your attentiveness, and I thank you for listening to me. And and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pray once more, and and uh, then we can. Uh, you wanna do? You wanna come up and do the prayer request? Okay, Father. I love you and I thank you and I, I thank you for the opportunity that you give me tonight, Lord. I, I I know I struggle in my in my prayer life and in my and in my Bible study life also, Lord. And and uh, I know sometimes, Lord, I I treat you like a genie in a bottle up on a shelf there, and and I only <laughs> I only holler at you whenever I'm in trouble or or, or when I need something, but. Uh, Lord, uh, help me to help me to be more more diligent with my prayer life. Help me to be more diligent with my Bible study, and and uh, so I can hear what you have to say to me. And I just, uh, Lord, I just I just thank you for all the blessings of my life, Lord. Uh, like I said a while ago, if you stop blessing me right now. I can never say that that you not that you not blessed me, Lord, because because you've been more more better to me than I deserve, or way more better to me than I've ever been to you. I'm sorry for that, but Lord, I just I thank you for uh, I thank you for New Hope Baptist Church, Lord. I thank you for the work that you're doing here in our church, Lord. I thank you for the opportunities that you've given us to reach out into this world around us, Lord, this community that you've, that you've given us to minister to, Lord. And I just, I just pray that you would just continue to, to give us more opportunities to just, to just help us to reach out and make an impact on Blunt County, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And, uh, Father, I just uh, I give you praise, honor, and glory for you are. 
everlasting to everlasting, Lord, you are high lifted up. You are great and greatly to be praised. I love you and I thank you in Jesus' precious name. All God's people said, Amen. Psalms 34, I was thinking about this. 15, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The righteous, those who are born again, those who are saved by God's grace. We have a direct line to the Father in heaven, don't we? We don't have to go through no switchboard operator. None of that. We can just call on his name and he's there. Great lesson. We uh, have about five or six. I can't remember. I don't have my list in front of me. But I believe it's five more Wednesday nights uh, that we have. And so far, everyone has just been fabulous. Amen. Someone commented. I can't remember who. But they said, you know, Pastor Mike, there's a lot of men in that church that can teach the word of God. I said, you're right. There's a lot. So we have some great teachers, and so I appreciate it. Brother Jimmy will be up next Wednesday night, so uh, we're anxious for him. And I see Jeff back there. We've got to get him on. We, we've still got about five or six left, so uh, I'm enjoying it. And then what we'll do, when it's all said and done, we're going to, Lord willing, we're going to go through some of the New Testament epistles that deals with the church. Uh, we're going to take a few months and go through some of those smaller letters and see what Paul has to say about the church. So you, uh, you, you be in prayer about that, okay? Uh, as we are tonight, briefly afterwards, I'm just going to mention to you those at whom I would like to see on the uh, nominating committee. That will be a, a matter of record <clears throat> for this. They will begin to call our current people. And uh, if you're not serving uh, and, and you'd like to serve, you've been praying about it, uh, you might want to ask, you know, what's available. Uh, we're always in need, okay? We're always in need. Always in need of children's church workers, Awana workers. Uh, Gene could probably use a few more bus riders and bus drivers, and, and so we're all, uh, okay? I think one area is pretty well covered, and that's the kitchen, right, Donna? Yeah, and Donna, we're good to see you tonight, okay? And I, I, I failed to mention Brother Don the other day. He's, he came. We're, we're glad to see him. So <clears throat> Now, if I worked in Awana, I'd want to work in the kitchen. <clears throat> Uh, can you really yeah I, that's where I'd like to work in the kitchen so uh, but w- we could use your help okay so you uh, you pray about that we'll be mentioning some more things <clears throat> as as we go Larry you're on deck buddy <clears throat> any prayer requests okay Miss Edwina <clears throat> a couple of weeks ago my niece had her baby premature and I posted it on the new women's new hope women's <clears throat> and asked prayer. The baby was one pound, 13 ounces. The baby now is two pounds. Uh, So the the baby's been functioning well. The mother's doing good. However, the baby developed a high white blood count today. And so they're very concerned about that because it usually means inflammation. But they said that they don't want to start giving an antibiotic, so they are going to make a decision by Saturday. So I'm just asking that you all help pray that these Hot blood counts get under control and that everything goes back to normal and this baby continues to grow and function. Um, so at the same time, my brother was in vacation in Italy and still is in Italy and he had a heart attack and he's in the hospital there and still in critical care. Um, he's had two major episodes, but then they started seeing all these signs of arrhythmia and um, He's been in there, this is his third week in intensive care over there. Luckily, he has two sister-in-laws that lives in the area of the hospital. So, and his wife is with them over there. My friend Donnie Lynn it has been sent home, pretty much saying that's all they can do for her. She's had this pancreatitis stuff going on since January 29th. But she looked good today and sounded real good, so please can remember her. Also, I'm helping with 
our class reunion that we're getting together and I just discovered that two of my classmates, uh, Doug Watson had fallen from Mattisville, had fallen and broken his back and then Mike Stevens from Loudoun has got cancer so I'm gonna request prayer for them too also. Okay. Thank you. Remember our daughter-in-law, Meredith, she's got a large kidney stone that she can't pass. She went through the <clears throat> clinic and can't see the urologist till the 7th. So just pray that the Lord sustains her till she can get into the doctor and watches over. Okay, here. <clears throat> Up front, Larry. <clears throat> Miss Diane. Um, my neighbor across the street uh, attends the Methodist Church right next to TC's over here on Old Niles Ferry Road. <clears throat> One of the family members in that church, a 10-year-old little boy, was electrocuted in a swimming pool. He's in critical condition. She's asked for prayer. He's, thank you. Okay. Anybody else? All right, Larry, we'll uh, move over here to this section. <clears throat> Anybody here, prayer request, anything? Jan and Kathy? Just wanted to let everyone know that um, Rosemary and Emerson Richmond mm -hmm. has a new grand, grand, oh. uh, granddaughter. Granddaughter. So then they're doing well. The baby weighed eight pounds and 14 ounces, and okay. she was born at home. <laughs> at home, okay. Thank you. Miss Kathy? <laughs> Please keep my sister-in-law, Dot, <clears throat> and also um, she's just having a hard time. And my cousin Leah is still recovering from COVID. She, uh, she had that for three months. She was intubated. She... Uh, has a lot of struggles with getting strength back and uh, communicating in this in the same with dot she it's very hard she wants to go home but she's got to get stronger and she has to be able to walk so please just keep her in prayers okay thank you <clears throat> okay still remember my aunt and uncle that I request prayer for and uh, Bethany and Zach and Michaela and Zach's family will be traveling the next week or so so remember them okay all right Miss Shirley Larry Miss Shirley Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to be a spokesperson for him. <laughs> um, Eddie has some things going on with him right now that are not terrible, terrible, but they're not good either. He has some problems with some teeth, and the dentist can't get him in until the 25th of July. So I need you all to pray that the somebody will drop off that list and he can get in before then because he he says he's not in pain but i don't know how true that is but anyway he does have irritation um and there's a nerve in one of them that's uh giving him fit so and you know he's just a stubborn old man he won't take no medicine so <laughs> But, uh, Eddie, Eddie, you asked for it. That's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> and the other thing is, is that uh, he, had, he had three places on his face where they went in and cut, and uh, he got the results back, and they, all three of them are cancerous, so they're going to have to go in and have surgery on that. And I, what they'll do, I'm assuming, is uh, go deeper and get more of the of the cells, so uh, he needs your prayers. Uh, he may not think he does, cause you know, he's a cowboy and he's tough, but we all need prayer. 
We all do, and he does. He knows he needs prayer. But um, uh, I would ask y'all to okay. remember him in prayer, <clears throat> and uh, that the God that the God that we serve will uh, <clears throat> give, him, give him relief from his his teeth and let him let him be able to do whatever they need to do to get rid of the the cells that are on his face. So, thank you very much. Okay. Thought she was going to break out into some personal stuff, but I'm. <laughs> I'm joking. Me and Shirley has joked. For, okay. Anyone over here? Prayer request? Anybody? Okay. Anybody in the balcony? All right. Uh, Mom and Dad, keep praying for them. Dad's got a back surgery July the 12th, so uh, be in prayer for him. And uh, quite a few in our church that's sick continue to remember Bob Norton in our prayers, Arnie Rogers uh, in our prayers. Uh, I'm trying to go by memory on my list in the office, and I know I'll always miss uh, somebody. Uh, Brenda Wynn is, is home. We want to continue to remember her in our recovery. And uh, so uh, there's just a lot, to, a lot to pray about, okay? Pray for a Sunday services, okay? Just really... Lift the Lord, uh, lift lift prayer up to the Lord for that. Okay, so, all right, we'll uh, come on down and pray, and then after that, just a brief two minutes. I'll tell you on the list, and we can get that recorded. Yeah. Mm -hmm.